there is a video called, Is 1984 Becoming a Reality? Hyphen, George Orwell's Warning to the World. Well, this was the Bible's warning to the world from the start. George Orwell is doing nothing. What was going on in George Orwell's lifetime, he just projected it into the future. It was dystopia then as it is dystopia now. It's just gotten worse. They have greater surveillance on us. They're, they are building laws after laws to tighten controls upon all of us down here. They have a different justice for the ones who build the laws, for those who have apex money, who are in power and control. There is a different justice for you down here among the have-nots. The haves versus the have-nots. The apex elite, this system of money first over character, wants no one to know what the stone the builders rejected means, which is why George Orwell's books do not present this revelation and also omit what the term Jews means and the circumcision of the heart. So George Orwell, he is lifted because he is doing for this system. He is not warning us of anything that we cannot fix that wasn't happening at the same time in George Orwell's life. See? The deification of people. If you do not deify George Orwell, or you do not deify J.K. Rowling and her Harry Potter crap, if you do not deify this one or that one or these stories or this book or this film or this leader, then you will be demonized. You are the wrong type of human. These are all deifiers and demonizers. That's all they do. It's the mark of the beast. They mark this one greater. They mark themselves greater. And they mark these over here lesser. They themselves who mark themselves greater over the rest of us well, they will mark themselves lesser as well over the ones they look up to and who raise them this way. It's a constant mark of the beast. Constant. Marking this one greater, marking this one lesser. We have a right to go judge, hurt, war, hate, commit pedophile acts, go through all these psyops to keep people in mystery and confusion. We do not want the world to ever know or experience oneness in the first law of God, that they shall be under governance of people who know how to fix issues without hurting others. And look at all of these people up here, killing millions, millions in the end with these wars, millions and millions of God only knows how much bloodshed can be weighed. God only knows how much damage has been done that was 100% avoidable, completely unnecessary, should never have happened, have the fascist Roman Empire, the victors, taught the world the first law of God, the circumcision of the heart, were living representations of the character of the Jews, and taught this to the world that where they went to conquer in Africa, and in India, and in China, and Japan, and the South Pacific, and the New World, telling the people we are representatives of the living spirit of God that no matter how you define yourself whatever your culture is whatever your rituals this is all good and true under God it's just that if there are any issues that arise to do harm you cut those issues away and you find the solution that does no harm this is how we keep the safety and peace well, this is not what happened then, did it? Demand for these people who say they love God or are here for safety and peace to explain, to speak, what has been omitted from life, from every history book and from every school book in this world. What does the first law of God mean? What is the truth of the term Jews, the people of the circumcision? All you folks out there right now who are watching this, who live your lives, to reconcile issues without doing harm? You've never been taught that you are the people of the circumcision. You are the Jews. You are the chosen ones. It has nothing to do with being literally Jewish. 
Romans 2.29. They just never teach this either, that the Jew is not one outwardly. A Jew is not a Jew that is one outwardly, as that circumcision is not an outward thing. A Jew is one inwardly and honors the circumcision of the heart and not the dead letter. The dead letter is dead literalism, legalism. It's a word that you read and you're going to literalize it. They turned the circumcision of the foreskin of the heart into a literal ritual, making it the circumcision of the foreskin of a male's penis. That does not make you the Jew in scripture. Per scripture itself, what makes you the Jew, the character of the Jew, no matter how you define yourself, what makes you the character of the Jew is that you honor the circumcision of the heart. When you have rising desires to do harm, you cut them away. You find the solution that does no harm. These are fake God lovers or wolves in sheep's clothing. Get real. Your minds were slaughtered, the slaughter of the innocents. They're doing it today. They do it every day. They slaughtered the minds of your parents. They slaughter our minds in false dogma. They omit the first law of God. They omit the circumcision of the heart. And they teach us that salvation comes by joining their club, following them, trusting them. They have the keys into the kingdom. If we do their repentance rituals and keep our noses clean, we'll get that kingdom. But they also have the power to cut you off, excommunicate you, or kick you out of the church. The ignorance is off the charts because humans have been dumbed down. They are very smart. We are very smart. We have brilliant minds. This is why they slaughter them at birth. The slaughter of the innocents, once again, is not literal. They're slaughtering our minds in false dogma, which is what Jesus hates. What more do you want from this scripture? Matthew 12, 32. Jesus doesn't even care if you say you believe in him. That scripture is teaching us that those who speak against the Son of Man, who say they don't believe in Jesus, shall be forgiven. Those who speak against the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit shall not be forgiven in this world or the world to come. You're speaking against the Holy Ghost. It's not that you're saying you don't believe in the Holy Ghost. It's that you're not living it. You're not building it. You're not covering your life in it. You are not going to fix issues without doing harm. Why don't you teach what faith is? Faith is no work. It's the workless work. But without works, our lives are fruitless under God. So what is the work we must do that is no work? It's no work being good in this world. It's no work finding the problem with these brilliant minds and fixing issues without doing harm. That's no work. Oh, it's a shitload of work to build armies, bullets, guns, spy versus spy, war, to fix things. That's a shitload of work. We're to be like the lilies of the field and toil not. We do not toil in machinations of us versus them. My religion's better than yours. Racism, misogyny, all of this. We do not toil in this. We are like the lilies of the field. We grow under the light and safety of God. We sow and reap this one-way truth in life. We are not a field of lilies hacking each other down, building all sorts of different religions, all of which don't even acknowledge the existence of such a thing as an all of the law of God or what the term Jews means. But yet look at this world. Though most of us are living as those lilies of the field, we are in fact fixing issues without doing harm. We are not waking up every morning designing to lie, cover up, foment hate, anti-Semitism, racism, misogyny, homophobia, and wars, and now talk of World War III. How many more thousands of years do you want this?